Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Big news overnight, a voting bill that was on the verge of going to Governor Greg Abbott's desk failing to pass after Democrats walked out of the House chamber just before the midnight deadline. We're going to have the latest on what could happen next. Taking a look outside with live cam 73 degrees at 430 this morning. It's muggy out there. Will we have rain this Memorial Day? Mike will let us know in just a bit. Well, good morning. It is Monday, May 31st. Memorial Day, a very special day for so many people around our country. Thank you so much for starting your day with us. Yesterday, I don't even know, I didn't leave the apartment. You need to get better at that, Max. Yeah, well, one day, one day. <laughs> I, I was going to go outside. I had wow. aspirations to get some sunshine, and it started raining, so I was like, you know what, You know what, it, it was kind of like, you know, I was, I was out and about running errands. We had some scattered showers. I got a run in around 5 o'clock, but it was kind of like you're waiting for the clouds. Like, is it going to happen? Mm -hmm. Is today going to be similar, Mike? Very similar to, to yesterday. Small chance for some rain. We've got a couple little things on, on radar right now, but, uh, yeah, there'll just be a couple of pop-ups here and there. Um, but this week, kind of jumping ahead to the end of the story here, you know, the wet May is going to lead into kind of a wet first week of June. So we've got more opportunities for rain coming up throughout the rest of the week. First of all, this morning, and yeah, like Sarah was talking about, it is definitely muggy out there, and we've got temperatures that are on the above normal side. There's the couple of showers. There was one little spot just to the south of Uvalde. That sort of fizzled on out, and a couple of showers down here right around uh, Victoria. There may be a little bit of mist or sprinkle this morning on top of that. And uh, temperature, 73 degrees, normal low is right around 70 so we're just above that got some 60s in parts of the hill country and well no big guess here that mold is very very high one of the highest mold readings we've had in a long time with all that moisture 19,000 plus and throughout the day we'll make it up to 80 today at noon 85 with a couple of showers a couple of thunderstorms scattered about the area and tonight basically there is Late this afternoon tonight, we're going to see more thunderstorms developing out here to the west, and there is the risk that some of those could become severe. It looks like we'll have another round of some nighttime storms tomorrow night into Wednesday. Better rain chances and... Well, I don't know if it's going to be the best for outdoor plans for the first weekend of June. Details on that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Sarah, Max. Thank you, Mike. Now breaking news from the state capitol in Austin. An 11th hour walkout by Democrats protesting the controversially new voting bill. But it may not be over yet as Governor Greg Abbott is vowing to revive the controversial bill. ABC's Andrew Dimbert has a story. Breaking overnight, one of the most restrictive voting bills in the country failing to pass after Democrats in the Texas House walked out of the chamber in protest before the midnight deadline. They were prepared to cut us off and try to silence us. We were not going to let them do that. And that's why Democrats used the last tool available to us. We denied them the quorum that they need to pass this bill, and we killed that bill. Yeah. Earlier, the chair of the House Democratic Caucus used a text message to spread word of the plan, saying, members, take your keys and leave the chamber discreetly. Do not go to the gallery. Leave the building. The voting bill has stirred controversy across the country because it would make it easier to contest an election on allegations of fraud, would limit early voting on Sundays when many black voters normally go from church to the polls, and would ban 24-hour locations and drive through voting, which had increased turnout among minorities. The power to literally overturn elections, much as the insurrectionists tried to do on January 6th when they stormed the Capitol, that's what worries me the most. This is a state of emergency for democracy in Texas. It is clearly aimed at people of color, at black and Hispanic Texans. But supporters argue the bill will improve election security. I think what, what the Republicans here would tell you is that they're trying to make sure that the person voting uh, is the person on paper so it's a legitimate vote devoid of fraud. With the passage of this bill, Texas would join at least 14 Republican-led state houses that have approved more restrictive voting laws this year. And even though Democrats in Texas prevented a vote overnight, the Republican governor isn't giving up, responding this morning by saying he'll add the bill to a special legislative session, saying ensuring the integrity of our elections and reforming a broken bail system remain emergencies in Texas. They will be added to the special session agenda. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York. 
And more Texas politics. A far reaching bill sent last night to Governor Greg Abbott would require some power generators to winterize against extreme cold following one of the most massive blackouts in the United States history here in Texas. It's in response to February's winter blackout that left 4 million people without power. Experts praise some reforms as significant, but say concessions to Texas's powerful oil and gas industry still leaves the grid very vulnerable. At least 151 people died in our winter storm and the ensuing blackouts. All of this according to the tally kept by state officials. And this also comes as more people in the San Antonio area had to deal with a lot of outages over the weekend due to the storms. And on this Memorial Day, millions hitting the road and taking to the sky for travel with the TSA on track to screen 6 million people since Thursday. Meanwhile, President Biden had to Arlington National Cemetery today for a wreath laying ceremony for many Americans. This Memorial Day marks the beginning of a return to normalcy, a big shift from last year at this time when most were in the height of the pandemic lockdowns. Coronavirus cases are down and more than half the country now has the vaccine. As a result, more states are dropping those COVID restrictions and Americans are ready to get out now more than ever. In New Zealand, several hundred people have been evacuated from their homes after heavy rain caused widespread flooding in the Canterbury region. Some of those were forced to leave their homes via dramatic helicopter rescues. Authorities have declared a state of emergency after some places received as much as 16 inches of rain over the weekend. Forecasters say more rain is possible there through tonight. Time now is 436, 73 degrees out. Well, still ahead, how two women are working together to make sure young teen girls at Southside ISD have the perfect prom. And next, the Indy 500 hosting the biggest post-pandemic crowd so far. We're going to tell you how many turned out for the big event, plus how San Antonio was represented in the race. You know, I stepped outside this morning and oh my God, my hair instantly was <laughs> just destroyed by this humidity. Poof. <laughs> Poof. But Mike will let us know about the rain we might be receiving through the week when we come back. And as we head to break here, are some of the many photos that you sent us of family and friends who have served in our nation's armed forces on this Memorial Day. We salute those who have paid the ultimate sacrifice for our great country and our freedom. Good morning and welcome back. San Antonio had a stake in this weekend's Indy 500 in front of 135,000 fans. 22-year-old Pato Award qualifying in 12th place and started the greatest spectacle in racing in the fourth row. Even at 40% capacity, the Indianapolis Motor Speedway hosting the largest post-pandemic crowd to watch in person, and they were not disappointed. In the end, it boiled down to a four-car showdown. We have San Antonio's own Pato Award. We have Simon, Alex, and Castro Neves. Palau and Castro Neves trading the lead multiple times over the final 20 laps but with two laps to go. Castro Neves taking the lead for good, navigating the late lap traffic the rest of the way, winning the five Indy 500 for a record time, fourth time in his career, first four time winner in 30 years. Wow, since 1991 and his post race celebration legendary on the heels of his first ever IndyCar victory at Motor Texas Motor Speedway earlier this month. 22 year old Pato Award was in the mix the entire race. He even led the greatest spectacle in racing more than once. Born in Mexico, moved to San Antonio with his parents. He would finish fourth overall in what will go down as the fastest Indy 500 ever ever. So great day for racing, great day for fans in the stands, great day for San Antonio. Speaking of which, let's go to baseball. All right, tough end to what was a great road trip for the San Antonio Missions. They fall to the Naturals 12 to 2 last night. San Antonio went 4 and 2 over the last 6 games. They're a little closer to 500, now 11 and 13 on the season. But don't worry fans, up next, Missions traveling to Springfield, taking on the Cardinals. That series starts tomorrow and it goes through Sunday. I know our very own Sarah Costa, huge Missions fan. Stop. We were discussing, <laughs> no. we were like, are we going to go Missions? Are we going to go basketball? You're like, we need Missions. Yeah. Like, okay, we got Missions. Gotta support San Antonio. Always. 441, 73 degrees out. Well, still ahead, how a local dynamic duo is helping to make prom night dreams come true. Plus, how a world-famous tennis player taking a stand on the mental health of other athletes. We're going to explain.
Well, tennis star Naomi Osaka was issued a $15,000 fine after refusing to appear at a press conference citing her mental health. ABC's Andrew Dembert has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, one of the top female athletes in the world taking a stand. Naomi Osaka clinched a victory in the first round of the French Open Sunday, but gave a brief on-court interview. I'm really glad that I won, and um, it's a very beautiful court. And then, nothing else. No press conferences, no media availability, as she told her 2 million Instagram followers before the tournament, quote, I've often felt that people have no regard for athletes' mental health, and this rings very true whenever I see a press conference or partake in one. I'm just not going to subject myself to people that doubt me. Tournament officials hit back with a $15,000 fine. Osaka holding court on Twitter. Anger is a lack of understanding. Change makes people uncomfortable. Coming up at 7 a.m., veteran tennis commentator Patrick McEnroe weighs in live. With your GMA First Look, I'm Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York. Two powerful women brought together by the same drive to serve and help those in their community. Jaffney Gray tells us about the lasting impact they're leaving on teen girls at Southside Independent School District. My mom had cancer at the time, so we were actually trying to purposely get here so she can get that medical attention. We walk through the border of Mexico for three days and three nights. Our Lady Prado moved to the United States from the Dominican Republic when she was seven years old. Sometimes we didn't have mon you know, money to eat food. And my mom did, she didn't have money to buy me clothes. Lucy Adame Clark faced similar struggles growing up at Alisson Apache Courts. We had to get in line for food. We had to get in line for shoes. We had to get, you know, hand-me-down clothing. No matter what, both of their families kept them focused on the right path. Instilled in me at a young age, though, your life is not dependent on the situation that you're at right now. You can make something of yourself. You have the same opportunities. You just have to go and get it. Always be there. Don't ever forget where you come from. Now, at 34, Awalina is a senior manager for Boeing Airspace Company. And at 49, Lucy is the first ever woman elected as Bear County Clerk. Despite their important titles, they give back to their community. The two women joined together with a mission to serve young teen girls at Southside ISD. It was the first time that I knew that there were high school students in our area, in a first world country, that were homeless. With the help of other nonprofit organizations, the duo has been collecting and donating hundreds of prom dresses from all over the world to the school district since 2015. These dresses were valued at least three, four, five hundred dollars or more. They've given away about a thousand so far. The first time we did it, we had to like walk away because we had tears in our eyes. And then at the same time, we get to talk to them and just say, what do you want to do when you grow up? How can, how can we help you? Help us help you. And it, sometimes, you know, it's just that five minute mentoring. Their goal is to inspire these young women to not only feel like confident queens on a special night, but to push themselves to be their best. That word impossible is there because it is possible. The sky is no longer the limit, but only the beginning. For What's Up South Texas, I'm Jaffney Gray. What a wonderful story. I know, I mean, I think I, now that just makes me think, I know I have tons of dresses that I can donate, so. There you go, you can help I, out. Yeah. All right, well, today is Memorial Day. We know a lot of people are gonna be out and about. They're going to be going to, I know there's a special program at Fort Sam, but a lot of people out and about with family and friends. So Mike, what should people expect? Well, uh, grab an umbrella because it's gonna be a lot like yesterday. You know, we started off with fairly nice, and then we had those showers popping up throughout the day, a couple of thunderstorms. They sort of died off, so that'll be the situation again today. But, uh, boy, you're going to get some use once again out of your rain jacket and umbrella throughout the rest of the week. And, of course, we had some very hefty rain, not only late Friday night, early Saturday morning. Yesterday, as well, a little over an inch and a half of rain from today's downpour on the south side. Yeah, it was coming down pretty hard and heavy there for a minute. And, like I said, then it moved on out, and that'll be this case today. So we're starting off very muggy out there, very warm, 73 in town, 72 divine cast. Astroville is at 75 right now and dew points 
you know, we actually got a little bit of a break in the humidity Saturday once all those storms moved on through here, and these numbers are actually down slightly compared to where they were yesterday, or excuse me, last week. But I mean, we're still in the upper 60s and low 70s, so we still have a lot of uh, humidity out there. Obviously, and it's going to get kind of wrung out by some of these showers and storms. Uh, the couple little specks here and there of some rain. We're now starting to see just a couple little sprinkles out there in portions of the hill country. One or two heading up 281 by. Blanco, maybe in and around Canyon Lake and a couple of these down here to the southeast. So there'll be a shower or two around this morning and then a couple more throughout the day. Now this uh, computer model, yeah, it does have one or two of those little uh, showers here and there, but it's not really too bullish on rain today. So again, it's going to be just kind of pop up hit or miss. Most of us won't see rain today. Uh, if you do, maybe a brief heavy downpour and that'll be about it. Then tonight, notice how we've got another line of these showers and storms wanting to develop out there in portions of the hill country work their way through in the overnight hours somewhat of a similar scenario to what we had friday night into saturday and then those most of them should be out of here by this time tomorrow and it looks like well you know kind of an off and on type rain situation again tomorrow but looks like the same situation or similar to it then tomorrow night into wednesday with more of those and tonight some of those storms could be potentially severe with high winds, hail being the biggest threats out there. And this is right now for the hill country, although the Storm Prediction Center is going to be updating this come later on this morning in the next few hours. So we'll see if they tend to adjust the uh, severe threat. 80 today at noon, a couple of showers, you know, one or two of them here and there, one or two of them around this morning. And then later on this afternoon, again, a shower, maybe a thunderstorm. Few and far between. Most of us don't see rain today. 85 high temperature. So temperatures are definitely going to be held down because the normal high average is 90. Now we'll have some of those overnight storms tonight. Same thing then tomorrow night into Wednesday. Wednesday looks to be a better chance for some rain. We'll have some scattered rain around the area tomorrow. It sort of eases a little bit. Still some rain Thursday and Friday and then looking like it wants to pick back up again by the weekend with rain chances. So none of those numbers, the top numbers, the highs are at normal readings, which is kind of a benefit, a lot of humidity and rain chances all week long. You know what I was going to say? I've been enjoying the cooler temps for this part of the year because of the rain. So I'll take Humi it. Now, humidity's obviously out there. You yeah. get one of those big, you know, showers, a little sun comes out, and it's like, ugh, steam bath. But uh, yeah. yeah, we've been kind of benefiting from that. And more than six inches of rain the wow. month of May. Wow. All right, Mike, thank you so much. Time now, 452, 73 degrees out. Up next, the music world is mourning the loss of an icon. A look back on the life of BJ Thomas. Taking a look at those lotto numbers, pick three, one, four, seven, fireball zero, daily four, nine, three, three, seven, fireball zero. Cash five, seven, 11, 14, 28, 29, Texas lotto, 20, 23, 29, 37, 39, 52, and powerball, 11, 13, 22, 27, 46, powerball 20, power play two. Good morning and welcome back. A music icon passing away, plus a big weekend at the movies for the box office. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Christopher Watson. There are people out there. And a solid sign. We're all eager to go to the movies again. A Quiet Place 2 is projected to debut with $58 million over the four-day holiday weekend. <sighs> That's a pandemic earnings record and about what the sci-fi horror sequel was expected to earn before the pandemic delayed its originally scheduled March 2020 theatrical release. What was your name? Cruella. Disney's Cruella also had a good weekend, taking in 26 and a half million bucks through Monday. Raindrops are falling on my head. BJ Thomas has died. The Grammy-winning singer of hits including Raindrops Keep Falling on My Head and Hooked on a Feeling announced in March that he had lung cancer. Thomas was 78. Ed Asner says he's heartbroken over the death of his Mary Tyler Moore Show castmate Gavin McLeod, calling him his brother. 91-year-old Asner and 99-year-old Betty White are the legendary sitcom's only surviving principal cast members. Also 91 on Monday, actor and director Clint Eastwood. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Christopher Watson, ABC News. Time now is 456, 73 degrees out. Well, still ahead on GMSA as the nation pauses to remember our military members this more Memorial Day. For many Americans, a holiday also marks the beginning of a return to normalcy.
And are you ready to share your internet with your neighbors? Ahead in Tech Bytes, how Amazon is making it so your devices do it automatically. Ahead on GMSA at six, kids will be kids, which means they don't always behave, but mm. bad behavior can dampen your child's learning in the classroom. So how can you help your child practice best behavior? We'll tell you next on GMSA at six. And taking a live look out at the roadways. Not too many people out and about. There's one, two vehicles. Not too much going on. We're gonna check in with Steven in just a bit. Live from Case at 12. An early morning fire leaves a home on the city's northwest side destroyed. Now the victims are left searching for two of their beloved family members. The details just ahead on GMSA. Americans on the move, reuniting with family and friends. I'm ABC's Faith Abube in Washington with the latest on another Memorial Day in the pandemic coming up. And taking a live look out at the Alamo City, 73 degrees old, muggy to start the morning. Sarah, what were you saying? You walked outside and poof. Poof, my hair was done. <laughs> oh, Good morning. Wait for it. There we are. Good morning, 5 o'clock. May 31st, it is Memorial Day, a special day for so many people around the country. We know a lot of people out and about. We know a lot of people have special ceremonies today. I believe there's a special ceremony at Fort Sam Fort later Sam. this morning. And hopefully it's a lot more calm and quiet than it's been the last couple of days. I know. I mean, this rain, it, it's, it's kind of been, you know, on and off scattered showers. Mike, you know, are we going to see the same thing today? Yes, uh, if you do have plans, you know, for some of those memorials uh, that we were just talking about or just to be outside. Yeah, there will be one or two scattered, uh, you know, showers, thunderstorms around the area, kind of like yesterday. We started off uh, pretty nice throughout the, the morning hour, the first portion of the day, and then started seeing those little showers popping up here and there. Most everybody did not see rain yesterday, but there will be some of them out there. We're at 73, as Max mentioned, and the bottom number dew point down there is at 69. It is lower than what it was late last week when we were well up into the 70, so the humidity is a little bit better. Still not great for the uh, hair, according to Sarah. It looks beautiful, by the way, my dear. Uh, 85 for a high temperature later on today, and we will have again those uh, couple of scattered showers around the area. The aquifer yesterday's reading up eight tenths of a foot, and the allergens very, very high mold as expected with all this moisture out there. 19,430 grass is on the low side. So take a look at radar right now. There are just a couple little, uh, you know, little specks here and there showing up. You kind of, kind of squint to see them out there in parts of the hill country, over right around. Uh, southwestern Bandera County, a couple of them popping up around Canyon Lake, up around Blanco, just, you know, one or two of them here and there. And we do have uh, just a few of them down along the coastal plain right around Victoria. So we will, you know, again, one or two of them here and there. Now, later on tonight, uh, there are some indications that there's going to be one of those big clusters of storms developing well out there to the west. And some of those could be on the strong to potentially severe side. So the Storm Prediction Center does have the marginal risk of severe weather in our western counties out there in the hill country. This is going to be updated later on the sea or later on this morning, pardon me. And so we'll have to see what things look like as far as if that gets changed. Then there's those thunderstorms overnight tonight, overnight tomorrow night and better rain chances going in toward the weekend and not to give away the end of the story, but uh, Keep your umbrella handy all week long. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos, good morning, sir. Anything going on? Hey, good morning, Mike. Well, we do have a few issues as we're getting this Memorial Day started. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at a crash that's actually occurring right over here off US 81 at Rigsby. This is in the eastbound lanes right now. It doesn't look like it's impacting much traffic right now, but this is something drivers are definitely going to want to be on the lookout for. As we know, lots of people are going to be hitting the road for Memorial Day travel. We've also spotted some construction here off 1604 westbound at Hosman, uh, not impacting traffic right now, but this is something where we usually see traffic starting to build as the day does progress. So just keep that in mind as we're heading out this morning. We also want to take a quick look here at inbound times. Now, if you're coming in from I-10, coming to downtown San Antonio from Bernie, look at a 25 minute commute, 281 from Bulverde. We're looking at 27 minutes right now. And if you're coming in from New Braunfels, about a 35 minute uh, from 35, that is, we have a 26 minute commute. That is, uh, let's go ahead and take one last look here at trans got I-10 at Woodlawn. Things are looking pretty good, but we'll be keeping an eye here in the traffic lab throughout the morning. Max Sarah. Thank you, Stephen. Late breaking news this morning. City's northwest side firefighters battling flames that ripped through the roof of a home and now the homeowners 
desperate to find their pets. Multiple fire units responded to the 12,300 block of Capeswood near Disavala and I-10 just before 3 o'clock this morning. Our Alicia Beretta is live from the scene with the latest on the damages as the family searches for those pets. Good morning, Alicia. Hey, good morning. Well, let me tell you, this is a two story home. Thankfully, no one was actually home when these flames broke out. And that first call for firefighters came around 255 to be exact. Here at the scene, things are clearing up. They have put the flames out. But of course, like usual, standing by to monitor any hot spots. What we know is when fire firefighters arrived on the scene, the flames were already shooting through the roof of the home. Downstairs in the back bedroom, firefighters found one dog struggling to breathe. That dog did have to be put on oxygen, and but, but this morning his status is still unclear. Once the homeowners arrived about an hour or two ago, they told firefighters they actually had a total of three dogs. So those two dogs this morning have yet to be accounted for. As far as damages, there isn't an estimate just yet, but we can see the home is in pretty bad shape with a huge chunk of the roof on the left side of the home and now gone. We also spoke to police on the scene. They tell us the homeowners had actually been staying at a nearby hotel uh, due to electrical problems. And out here we can actually see one of those storage bins. So they were in that moving process. That information will be handed over to investigators who again are on the scene right now, but an exact cause has yet to be determined. Max Sarah, back to you. Thank you, Alicia. The CDC says more than 166 million Americans now receiving at least one dose of the vaccine with more and more Americans getting vaccinated this year. Memorial Day looks a lot different. That's right. People are shedding their mask, heading outdoors and gathering for big events. ABC's Faith Abube has more from Washington. A Memorial Day like we haven't seen in over a year. Americans out and about, comfortable leaving their homes to pay tribute and reunite with family and friends. What bad weather? You're with family. There's instant sunshine to be with family for the first time in years. In the skies, a dramatic uptick in airline passengers. Since Thursday, the TSA screening more than 6 million at airports across the country. So I haven't been home in two years, so whatever I got to do to get home, I'm going to do to get home. On the ground, Dixon leads the Indy 500 drawing a pandemic record of 135,000 spectators. Thousands also gathering in Louisiana, watching this Memorial Day parade. I'm feeling free. <laughs> no mess. It's so good to be out and it's a beautiful day. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> The fight against the pandemic showing signs of progress. New daily COVID cases in the U.S. down 70 percent in just the last six weeks. The real game changer has been the vaccine. But data shows fewer Americans are rolling up their sleeves for the vaccines. The daily vaccination rate now 60 percent lower than at its peak in April. Wednesday, President Biden is expected to deliver remarks on the country's vaccination program and the COVID response. But over the weekend... <laughs> It was all about remembering fallen service members ahead of Memorial Day. The president in Delaware Sunday. With those names that's on that wall and every other wall and tombstone in America of veterans is the reason why we're able to stand here. And later on today, the president and vice president will be in Arlington National Cemetery as part of a Memorial Day observance, including laying a wreath at the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier. Faith Abube, ABC News, Washington. San Antonio police say charges are pending for a man who first responders had to rescue yesterday. SAPD says he fell into a creek off San Pedro Avenue near Bassey Road. San Antonio fire officials say it took nine units to try to reach the man who they say was initially holding on to a bridge yelling for help. Witnesses saw it all happen. Finally, he comes out halfway in the middle of the whole creek and basically just like, hey, I'm OK, I'm right here. But then everybody started heading towards him, so he starts backing up towards that way, trying to take off. So he kind of already knew it was in trouble. If it would have been really raining and really thundering and all that stuff, it would have been a hell of a lot worse. The man was eventually rescued and then was taken into custody. A San Antonio police sergeant on scene says charges are possibly pending. We are still working to figure out why and what those charges might be. Time now is just about 5.09, 73 degrees out. Still ahead, why Amazon is making its devices to automatically share your internet with your neighbors. Huh. And next, it has been a long road for today's great graduate. How her dream of becoming a nurse is closer than ever. 
thanks to hard work and dedication. We're going to introduce you to her. Take a look outside with live cam 73 degrees at 509 this morning. Man, my rain gauge over the weekend got at least three inches on that Friday night. Will we have more rain today throughout the week? Michael, let us know in just a bit. As we had to break here, some of the many photos you sent us, friends and family who have served in our nation's armed forces. On this Memorial Day, KSAT salutes those who have paid the ultimate sacrifice for our great country and for our freedom. Good morning and welcome back. In our great graduate series, we highlight local students who have gone above and beyond, who have overcome the seemingly unimaginable circumstances and are now set up to thrive. And today we introduce you to Teresa Gomez of Brackenridge High School in SAISD, who didn't let a tough journey and a language barrier slow her down. It was hard. It was really hard not knowing the language, not being able to understand what they were saying or what they were telling me. And I just remember crying every night to my mom. Meet Teresa Gomez, a graduating senior from Brackenridge High School, whose journey to this moment was far from easy. Her grandfather uh, really is kind of her hero because of how he crossed her over. Um, she had a story of one day being in Mexico, um, the next she found out she was going somewhere and a few days later, I think she woke up here. So it was a journey. Her grandfather carried her for three days. Teresa tells me she will never forget her family. And now they are a big part of what motivates her. Unfortunately, I lost my grandma two years ago. And my grandpa, my biggest, the person that brought me here like six years ago. Oh. It was hard. But, and then not being able to go over there and not being there for the last time, it's really hard. But now I'm doing this for them. Well, I think she's a role model for her class and not just her class, but those coming behind her to know that, hey, I can do this. Teresa is an inspiration to her classmates, her teachers and her sisters. I say never give up, never give up and prove everybody wrong. Prove everyone wrong. If they're gonna tell you, you're not gonna be able to do it. Show them you can do it. Show them you're going to be able to be better than them. Next stop is Texas A&M San Antonio, where she wants to study to become a nurse. And she really did have such an inspirational story. So powerful, perseverance, tenacity is amazing. Way to go, Teresa. That was a great story, Max. Yeah. 515, 73 degrees out. Well, still ahead, more details on why Instagram is making changes due to censorship claims. Because of our gender, who we fall in love with, the color of our skin, or the ability of our bodies, our life's work may never be seen or heard. It's time for change. LifeWater is on a mission to fill the world with creativity by people like us, so it can inspire the next generation. Join LifeWater's movement to make unseen artists seen. Next level crushing. Play now. Centrum Multi Gummies aren't just great tasting. They're power packed vitamins that help unleash your energy. Loaded with B vitamins and other key essential nutrients, it's a tasty way to conquer your day. Try Centrum Multi Gummies now with the new look. In today's Tech Bytes, internet sharing via Amazon. Next week, the tech giant will enroll Alexa and other devices in what's called Amazon Sidewalk. The service will share part of your internet bandwidth with neighbors who are not connected and vice versa. You do have the ability to opt out. Instagram is tweaking its algorithm. That's after some employees accused the company of censoring pro-Palestinian content during the Israeli-Hamas conflict in Gaza this month. The social media platform says it plans to attach equal importance to original 
original content and so-called relocated content. And finally, a change of heart from WhatsApp. The messaging service now says it will not limit features for users who don't accept its privacy policy. WhatsApp, which is owned by Facebook, says it will send reminders about the policy, which took effect May 15th, but functionality won't be affected. Those are your tech bites on this Memorial Day. Have a great day. Would you be willing to share your internet with people walking by? No. Yes, as long as it's not a security concern. You're way too nice. Well, I don't see the problem. <laughs> I know there are a lot of people who, and I'm one of those people who are out and about with my phone, and there are certain apps you need Wi-Fi for, and when I don't have Wi-Fi, okay. it's well, the worst. Well, you can walk in front of my house, and you can, I, I would Thank share, you. you know who I'd share my internet with? Mm. Steven Cavazos, traffic guy. Oh yeah, we could be <laughs> internet twins. I think that'd be great. I'd be honored. It, for it. Thank you. <laughs> I'm sure he does. It's not that <laughs> hard. One, two, three, four. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Hop on my internet, guys. Well, you know, we ha do have a busy start to this Memorial Day. Actually, a few crashes that are now popping up. Let's go ahead and take a look and see where this one just popped up here off 1604 in those eastbound lanes. This is to the exit ramp at Nacogdoches. Not impacting traffic. Again, it's still very early, but if you're going to be heading out the door in the next few moments, just keep an eye on these crashes because that could impact your commute to get to work or maybe to drop a, well, it's Memorial Day, so we know not a lot of people are going to be out to go to work today, hopefully. But we do have another crash here off 87 and Rigsby at, in those eastbound lanes. This crash we told you about a little bit earlier. Again, not impacting traffic, but if you are getting up early with us this morning, these crashes you want to be on the lookout for. Give those first responders plenty of room so they can get that scene clear. Now, if you are going to be traveling for this holiday, take a look at these gas prices. Bear County, 260 and around the state, we're looking at 271 and around the country, 304. So if you need to fuel up, just be on the lookout for those gas prices. Another look here at Trans guide still dark outside, but we got a lot of early birds on the road here at 35 and Caesar Chavez. So we'll be keeping an eye here in the traffic lab throughout the morning, guys. All right. Those traffic price or those gas gas prices. <laughs> oh yeah. my gosh. It's actually down a cent from last week. So yeah. Spencer. There you go. In progress. If 55 bucks to fill the tank. Oh, it is the worst. <laughs> when you have an SUV. Well, yep. compared to what, eight, nine months ago, and it was probably. Uh, to be fair, that was spoiled. a unique situation. We got 35. spoiled. Yeah. All right, Mike, so. didn't see too much out there weather-wise, though. Uh, not today. So far, yesterday, some folks saw some pretty hefty rain. Other folks didn't see much of anything, and then once it uh, moved on out, beautiful sunset, like was the case out there in Cal Colorado County. Thank you very much for the uh, KSAC Connect picture. Uh, this morning, we're starting off, and it's... Uh, Kind of like every other morning, it's muggy out there. So here's some of the rainfall estimates. Now, this is just over the past 24 hours. Does not include what we had late uh, Friday night into Saturday. And notice how it was very scattered about. And then those pockets of the very heavy rain here and there down, uh, you know, just to the southeast of Goliad, two and a half inches of rain right around Nixon, two and a half, uh, just about an inch to the west of in western Atascosa County there, just over an inch. And then in the metropolitan area, Southwest side of uh, San Antonio, about an inch and a half of rain. Same thing down near Floresville and almost two inches up around Helotus. And then you go half mile one direction and didn't get any rain basically in the past 24 hours over there uh, out in uh, Medina County, about an inch of rain. And then look at the big area where there wasn't any rain. So it's going to be a similar situation today where we'll just have kind of the scattered rain. And that's what's going on right now. And uh, you can see up there to the north and northwest, we've got these few little uh, sprinkly showers here and there, some around Canyon Lake near Blanco and then out there in western Bandera County. Those are starting to pick up maybe a little bit more. And of course, got a few showers down along the uh, the coastal plain right now computer model this one goes way into the in the future and again a couple of scattered showers nothing's really too bullish on rain today but then tonight we get some of those nighttime storm complexes to develop and move through here and then we'll have those should be ending about this time tomorrow morning and then we'll have some more scattered rain around the area tomorrow another round of nighttime storm complex tomorrow night into Wednesday morning and then throughout the day on Wednesday, a better chance for showers and thunderstorms around here. Things will maybe taper a bit, although we'll still have some rain. And again, this model does tend to broad brush things, but what you can take away from it is the fact that yes, we do have rain chances then going into the rest of the week, Friday as well, and then going into Saturday. Saturday looks like it could be a fairly wet day around here and some of that rain will be lingering on into Sunday. Um, yeah, we didn't have a lot for a while, and now it just continues, and the faucets are going to continue this week.
80 at noon today. A couple of showers, maybe a thunderstorm scattered about. Most folks won't see rain today. There'll just be a few of them popping up here and there. 85 high temperature. We'll have some storms overnight tonight. Same thing tomorrow night. Scattered rain throughout the day tomorrow. And then more rain Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and then it picks back up again over the weekend. Temperatures mid 80s for highs. All right. And it's going to be wet. I just want to wait for the day where there's no rain on that graph. No, I actually enjoy the rain. <sighs> I'm like, I think I'm I, the only one. That's fine. My, my yes, garden I, looks I kinda, phenomenal. I tend to agree with you, but it, you know, know. we were hurting for it. I know, I know. Have my water enough, bill though? is so low. We have had a lot, yes. Okay. Yeah. And, and some folks are saying, okay, enough for a while, but mm -hmm. there's a lot more coming. All right. Thanks, Mike Osage, thank you. 524, 73 degrees out. Well, up next in your morning spotlight, Marky Mark. Mark Wahlberg oh. stars in a new sci-fi thriller, plus a First look at an autograph limited edition of Queen's Greatest Hits. This isn't your first life, Evan. You are an infinite. You've lived and died a thousand times. The first trailer is out for Infinite, starring Mark Wahlberg as a man plagued by memories of places he's never been, at least not in this lifetime. The sci-fi thriller debuts June 10th on Paramount+. Plus. And makeover. One version of the collector's edition CD features a print signed by band members Brian May and Roger Taylor, with just 1,000 copies available. More info at QueenOnline.com. Queen Greatest Hits is the UK's best-selling album of all time, and it's currently number 21 on the Billboard 200. It's been on that chart for 439 weeks. Giving my CD another spin in Hollywood. I'm David Daniel. I have that album on vinyl. Did you get it signed? I know. Well, yeah. <laughs> Time now, 529, 73 degrees out. Well, still ahead on GMSA, even though many COVID-19 restrictions have been reduced during Memorial Day weekend, why health experts are worried about repeating itself when it comes to the coronavirus. And are you ready to plan the next vacation? Why a cruise out of Galveston could now be on your list of options? We're going to explain. Mother Nature is telling us what's going to happen. There's going to be COVID-26 and COVID-32 unless we fully understand the origins of COVID-19. Making headlines this morning, why some health professionals here in Texas sounding the alarm when it comes to the future fight against the pandemic. 73 degrees at 532 this morning. Lots of, you know, rain over the weekend. Well, scattered rain, and Mike says we might be having some more scattered showers throughout the week. All right, we're going to check in with Mike in just a few moments, but until then, good morning. It is Monday, May 31st. It is Memorial Day, a special day to remember and honor those who died in honor of our service for our country. Now, people are out and about today. We know there's a lot of special ceremonies, Fort Sam, but yeah. a lot of people out and about driving, traveling, out, out, traveling. Um, I know, you know, San Antonio is a big tourist city, so a lot of people, you know, in around Texas coming into San Antonio to enjoy their day off. And Mike, I mean, are we going to have a day similar to what we had yesterday? Yep. We will have scattered showers, a couple of thunderstorms popping up. There are one or two of them out there as of right now. Uh, not a lot. Most everybody, you know, kind of like yesterday, most everybody did not see rain. That'll be the case again today, but then we are going to have better rain chances a couple of times throughout the rest of the week. 73, as you mentioned, uh, dew points at 69, so still a lot of humidity out there. But that number is lower than what it was even late last week. Here's those few little scattered showers that actually the coverage is kind of picking up a bit more. There's a few more of them out there popping up northern Medina County into Bandera and then also right around Canyon Lake. As you can see, a few of these up into uh, Hayes County and everything kind of sliding up to the north to north uh, west. Same thing down here along the coastal plain. We've got just a few of these showers that are popping up pretty much moving off in a northwestwardly direction. Later on tonight, looks like there's going to be one of those nighttime storm complexes.
kind of like what we had on Friday. High winds and hail can be expected with this, and so there is the marginal risk for severe weather often in our western counties in the hill country and all along the Rio Grande. And Storm Prediction Center is going to come out with an update on this later on this morning, so we'll see if they tend to rearrange this, move it, or add to it. So again, that's going to be later on this morning. As far as the rest of today, mostly cloudy, a couple of showers, a thunderstorm scattered about here or there. Just take an umbrella and keep it handy the rest of the week. Some uh, morning storms, and that's after those storms tonight. Then scattered storms uh, throughout the day. Then we'll have more rain tomorrow night into Wednesday. Wednesday looks like the peak of the rain chances, and then it's going to peak again over the weekend, especially as it looks right now on Saturday. It's going to be uh, fairly wet. Details in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos. I know there's a problem last half hour. Is it still going on? Yeah, we're still spotting some problems, but you know, we want drivers to be safe. Mike, as you mentioned that the weather may be wet in the coming days, so we just want the roads to everyone to be safe on the roads, that is. Now, things are looking pretty good here at 281 at Hildebrand. Nothing too major but as we pointed out earlier, we still have this crash that's happening here. Nacogdoches, so keep that in mind if you're heading in that area because we still have that crash that is out there this morning. Now let's take a look at our commute times right now coming into downtown San Antonio from 37 coming in from Pleasanton. We're looking at about a 28 minute commute time 35 coming in from Lytle 17 minutes. And if you're coming in from Castroville on Highway 90, expect about a 19 minute commute time. Now let's take one last look here at Trans Guy Loop 410 at McCullough. Things are shaping up this morning, but we'll be keeping tabs as the day progresses. Guys. Thank you, Stephen. As we mark Memorial Day today, a day to honor those who died for our country, President Joe Biden looking ahead to another American holiday, July 4th, as the country moves towards his vaccination goal of getting at least 70% of American adults with at least one shot of the vaccine. However, as CNN's Britt Conroy reports, there's also a new deadline. He's given the intelligence community 90 days to report back on the origins of COVID-19. Understanding where COVID-19 came from. It's absolutely essential. It informs how we go forward and how we prepare ourselves against these threats in the future and reduce these likelihoods. Did it come from an animal in the wild or from one of China's wet markets or from a lab like Wuhan's Institute of Virology? where researchers were looking at bat virus mutations. These doctors say getting an answer is critical. If it's from a lab. It's going to affect how we respond to this. We, we're going to need to focus on trying to get better controls and this sort of high risk research going forward. And there's the fear history will repeat itself. Mother Nature is telling us what's going to happen. There's going to be COVID-26 and COVID-32 unless we fully understand the origins of COVID-19. President Joe Biden ordered the intelligence community to redouble its efforts in investigating the origins with a top Republican on the House Foreign Affairs Committee alleging this about the lab leak theory. This is the worst uh, cover up in human history. Uh, that we've seen resulting in 3.5 million deaths. Though there's still no evidence, which is why there are calls for an outbreak investigation in China. But at this point, China is refusing full access to the lab and its records. Britt Conway, KSAT 12 News. And this morning, the man accused of plotting to carry out a mass shooting at a Walmart in Kerrville remains in Kerr County Jail on a $250,000 bond. The Kerr County Sheriff's Office says 28-year-old Coleman Thomas Blevins charged with terroristic threats to create public fear and serious bodily injury. Investigators say they intercepted a message from Blevins on Thursday indicating he was, quote, preparing to proceed with a mass shooting, end quote. That threat included a Walmart. Now, Blevins arrested Friday. Authorities searched his home. They found firearms, ammunition, and a lot more, including what officials called radical ideology paraphernalia, such as books, flags, and handwritten documents. Switching gears here, it's the ultimate dream home for Star Wars fans, and it can be yours for just well, $4.3 million. Known as the Darth Vader House, this home in Houston features four bedrooms and four and a half baths. The nickname comes from the exterior's resemblance to the famed Star Wars villain's helmet. The property also has a four car garage, which might just be big enough to park the Millennium Falcon. Were you a Sith Lord fan or I was a Jedi. Jedi fan? I still believe I'm a Jedi. No comments? <laughs> yeah, you will not remember this you conversation. You will not remember this conversation. <laughs> All right, let's get back on camera. 539, 73 degrees out.
Well, if you're looking to have a nice alcoholic beverage on your next vacation flight, you may have to wait a little longer. We'll tell you why. Opposed to a mean alcoholic beverage. <laughs> and next, how our latest great grad gift of giving to others started at an early age when he joined the Cub Scouts. We're going to explain. 73 degrees outside at 539 this morning. Will we have some scattered showers this Memorial Day? And will it continue throughout the week? Mike will let us know when we come back. Good morning and welcome back. Some of us tell our kids to get involved in as much as possible when it comes to school. And while it can be a lot, one student here seems to have done it all. Ursula Perry introduces us to today's great graduate, Logan Jaros, who has exceeded expectations at Central Catholic High School. From being a part of Junior ROTC to National Honor Society to becoming an Eagle Scout, Logan Jaros is a leader at Central Catholic High School. Logan, Logan's one of those quiet leaders. He, he leads by example, not by what he says. Logan's involvement in clubs and sports has brought out his leadership qualities. Faculty at Central Catholic say he's someone students admire. Um, my journey started when I was a Cub Scout in elementary school. It took me six years to start uh, just a Boy Scout to finish that Eagle Scout. And his final Eagle Scout project, creating an outdoor area so students can eat and interact outside. He did it by building planters that now serve as a barrier around the eating area. Outside now, there's a bunch of people outside. And I guess like I started the movement of people eating outside due to my service project, which it, it, honestly, I look back at it and I find it pretty cool how like, I was able to serve all my uh, fellow peers. His parents are very proud of his dedication and commitment. And he's into everything and involved. Uh, that keeps him busy and keeps him focused on his ultimate goals and objectives. So I think it's been a positive influence. I, I feel a sense of pride and, and satisfaction. Logan plans on attending Texas Tech and he wants to study biology. The plan is to go to dental school and become an orthodontist. For Great Grads, I'm Ursula Perry for KSAT 12 News. All right, I love our great grad segment. If you ever want to see any of them, we have a whole section to set to KSAT.com. Congratulations, Logan. 544, 73 degrees out. And next, we'll tell you when you can take to the high seas again, thanks to new CDC guidelines on cruises going out of Galveston. In your morning consumer headlines, American Airlines says it won't resume alcohol sales in its main cabin until September. Passengers will have to wait until September 13th to order a mid-flight drink. That date coincides with the end of the Transportation Security Administration's mask mandate for all planes. The decision to extend the alcohol ban follows a recent assault of a Southwest flight attendant that resulted in a serious injury. The airline says alcohol will continue to be offered in first and business class cabins, but only in flight. And the CDC signing off on parts of Carnival Cruises plans to restart operations from three home ports here in Texas and Galveston. The Port of Galveston has agreed to support the cruise operator with additional public health and operations resources. Now, this is a condition set by the CDC guidelines before any ship can set sail with test cruises or paying guests. Now, Carnival says this is another step closer for passengers returning to the high seas. The line planning to put three ships in service in July. Not clear yet if Carnival is going to start with volunteers or with full sailings. A couple transportation stories, so let's go to our transportation expert, Stephen. How are we looking out there? How are things cruising you out know, there, Stephen? I, I'd rather <laughs> take the road. If I can drive, I'd rather drive somewhere. I mean, I don't even like planes, guys. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the roads are definitely for me. And if you're going to be traveling around San Antonio, let's take a look and see what we have happening right now. We still have this crash that's being reported here in those eastbound lanes of 1604, the exit ramp of Nacogdoches Road. Again, not making much of an impact on the commute this morning, but let's see how that may look here in these westbound lanes or eastbound lanes that is of 1604 right now that drive time to I 10 to 35 is about 14 minutes and over in the westbound lanes we're looking about a 15 minute drive time so nothing too bad right now but of course we want to give our first responders plenty of room to get that scene clear uh, taking another look here at trans guy 35 at Almo the morning is picking up Mike guys I mean things are looking smooth so far all right, it looks dry out there. You said you walked out. Poof. It was a, it's a poofy morning, ladies. So it's a ponytail, lots of hairspray morning, maybe a hat if you're going to be out. Are we going to have sun at all today, Mike? A little bit mixed in. 
You know, just uh, here and there, uh, mostly cloudy skies, and then there will be some more showers around here. And as far as what poofy days, uh, that'll probably continue <laughs> on throughout the rest of the week. And all that because all the moisture in the ground too, mm, that, yeah. you know, that adds to it. So beautiful picture though, the sunset over there at Lake Travis. That's a very pretty. Thank you very much for that one. Not the prettiest of pictures right now. A poofy morning as you put it. So, hey, uh, March and April, of course, at the end of April, we had a whole bunch of rain, obviously, and we had those days when it was really heavy. So we picked up between the two months, just over six inches of rain. The month of May, it was six and two thirds to be exact. And for the month of May, pretty much uh, basically the same amount. It was 6.12 inches, well above normal by just a whole bunch out there, about uh, almost two inches above normal. And we may add to that before the month is over today. A couple of showers around and notice how they're starting to just over the past couple of hours. A few more of these are showing up. Not much down there along the coastal plain, but a few more of these showers there. Northern Bandera, excuse me, Northern Medina County, uh, Uvalde, Moving up into Bandera and then also up here uh, in and around northern Kamal and Hayes counties, especially a couple of, you know, OK showers here and there. And again, those few down there to the southeast. So we will have just one or two of them kind of scattered about the area throughout the day as this model depicts not a heck of a lot throughout the day, just a, a few of them and some sunshine kind of mixed in. But basically, we'll be leaning toward the cloudier skies. One thing we'll have to watch out for, though, are those uh, storm complexes that are going to try and develop later on tonight and work their way down through the area. Some of those could be on the strong to potentially severe side, some hefty downpours, strong winds, and maybe some hail. A similar situation to not going to say it's going to be as bad, but a similar situation to what we had Friday night, early Saturday morning. And then we'll just have some uh, scattered showers around here uh, throughout the day tomorrow, maybe a little bit better chance for it. And it looks like we'll do that again tomorrow night into Wednesday as far as one of those big nighttime sort of storm complexes and some of the computer models. This is through Wednesday night and especially out to the west have, you know, a couple, two, three, four inches or more than that. And obviously some heavier amounts in, in spotty areas and even rain off to these. So most everybody is going to be seeing rain. Of course, a lot of this over here is in the uh, the recharge zone. So there is that potential to have some more very hefty downpours. And then also tonight there is the severe potential and that's for high winds and hail mainly out to the west. And there is a very small severe potential again then tomorrow night today 80 at noon. A couple of showers scattered about the area, you know, here or there. Take an umbrella. Most everybody won't see rain, but there will be a couple of thunderstorms mixed in as well. And 85 for a high temperature today. Cluster of thunderstorms overnight tonight, overnight Tuesday night, tomorrow night. And Wednesday is going to be the day it looks like to have uh, the peak of rain. We'll still have shower storms around Thursday, Friday, and then looks like we get another right now decent chance of rain over the weekend. Mm. You're oh. loving that. I, you are loving that. I love it because my water bill is low. Mm. My garden looks great. There is, yeah, I've got one bush out in the backyard there which died off. Yeah. And I trimmed from the freeze and I trimmed it down. I've done this in the past before. This thing, I, you can almost see it growing. Yeah, they're coming yeah. back with a vengeance. Yep. There you go. A couple green thumbs here in the newsroom. <laughs> no, not me, her. <sighs> 552, 73 degrees out. I live in an apartment. I don't have plants. Okay. <laughs> this one grows despite me. So. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, a showdown at the box office this weekend. Corella and A Quiet Place Part 2 both open huge. We'll tell you which one took the box office. I really want to see Cruella. It looks so good. It does look good. All right, take a look at those ladder numbers. Pick three, one, four, seven, fireball zero. Daily four, nine, three, three, seven, fireball zero. Cash five, seven, 11, 14, 28, 29, Texas Lotto, 20, 23, 29, 37, 39, 52, and Powerball. <gasps> I didn't win. Uh, neither did I. 11, 13, <laughs> 22, 27, 46, Powerball 20, Power Play 2. My girl Raya and I are going to fix the world. Raya and the Last Dragon spent a 13th straight weekend in the top five, earning $1.9 million. Jason Statham and Wrath of Man fell to fourth place on ticket sales of $2 million. After two weekends on top, Spiral dropped to third place with $2.3 million. Who are you? You look vaguely familiar. I look stunning. Cruella opened in second place with $21.3 million, Disney's best debut since theaters reopened, but nowhere near enough for number one. 
A Quiet Place Part 2 made a lot of noise in its first weekend out. $48.4 million, the biggest opening weekend since the pandemic began. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. I guess I have to see Quiet Place 1 now. Ahead in our next hour of GMSA, Texas Democrats staging a walkout over a new voting bill. We're going to explain what happened and what comes next. Plus, a San Antonio man recovering after being shot while riding a scooter. We have the details. And we have the late, very latest on an overnight fire on the northwest side. Alicia Herrera standing by with a live update. Taking a live look out at the roadways there. Not too much going on in this shot. 281 in San Pedro. We're going to check in with Steven. Tell you everything you need to know. from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Good morning. It is Monday, May 31st. It is Memorial Day. Thank you so much for starting your morning with us. And yeah, we are in for Mark and for Stephanie. Yeah. A lot to talk about. A lot to talk about this Memorial Day. Uh, you know, we've had some, we had some pretty heavy rain over the weekend. On um, Friday night, my rain gauge next morning was over mm. three inches. That's and crazy. that was like an over like a three hour period. Yeah, we have a lot to talk about in the weather and the track before we get there. A reminder on this Memorial Day, City Hall and most municipal offices are closed. Public safety and emergency services still open. Garbage recycling will also be collected as normal today. But like we've been saying, it is Memorial Day. A lot of people out and about, a lot of special ceremonies across the Alamo City. What can people expect? Uh, more scattered showers, maybe some hefty downpours. Some folks picked up um, close to two inches of rain or more than that yesterday, just with some, those downpours, especially in the afternoon. Of course, all government offices are closed down. U.S. government offices closed mm -hmm. today as well. And you've got kind of a murky start. Sarah's been saying that it's not a good hair day today when you step outside because of all the uh, humidity out there. And we do have a few showers that are already starting to show up here in northern Medina County, moving up in toward uh, Bandera and everything kind of sliding off to the north to northwest. Same thing off to the north and northeast of here, right around Blanco uh, into Kamal, as well as Hayes counties. Just a few of those scattered showers, a few of them down there along the coast. And we'll just see them kind of scattered about throughout the rest of today. And then tonight, is when we're it's looking like there's going to be one of those big nighttime storm complexes similar to what we had Friday night and that right now is prompting the storm prediction center to issue the at least the threat for severe weather, the marginal risk, and that's for high winds and hail. Now, the Storm Prediction Center is going to be updating this later on this morning, so we'll see if this gets rearranged, moved, or even added to for that would be for tonight. And then tomorrow night looks like we may have a similar situation. Right now, we are in the low 70s, uh, some upper 60s in parts of the hill country, and we'll make it up into the uh, upper 70s, close to 80 today at noon. Uh, a couple of scattered showers, a couple of thunderstorms uh, here and there. Most of us won't see rain today, but we do have improving rain chances. And uh, yeah, it's going to be, you know, wet May starting off to be a wet June. All those details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Stephen Cavazos, Traffic Authority. What's going on, sir? Hey, good morning, Mike. Well, we have spotted a few issues, but most of those issues seem to be at 1604. A few crashes that drivers are going to want to be aware of here. Let's go ahead and take a look where this crash is being happening. Uh, the eastbound lanes at I-10. Uh, now, this is what TxDOT is reporting. Doesn't look like it's causing many issues right now in that road. But again, 1604 does seem to be the problem spot this morning. Take a look at this crash over here that's happening in the eastbound lanes, further down the eastbound lanes, right at the exit ramp to Nacogdoches. This one has been there for quite a while. Again, not impacting traffic right now, but that's what people are going to want to be aware of as they head out the door this morning. Now, if you are going to be traveling into downtown San Antonio from uh, 37 coming in from Pleasanton, we're looking about a 28, com 28 minute commute time. That is 87 coming in from Lavernia. We're looking about 23 minutes and 30 minutes if you're coming in from I-10 from Seguin. Now, let's take a look here at Transguide. This is 281 at San Pedro. Very smooth right now. Pretty empty, but TxDOT, of course, is encouraging drivers to buckle up if you're going to be hitting the roadways for any traveling this weekend or this coming week uh, as part of their initiative. Click it or ticket and coming up in the next few minutes here on GMSA. What Texas has to say about the number of deaths they saw in the last year from people not wearing seatbelts. We'll have that coming up, guys. 
Thank you, Stephen. We now go to some late breaking news on the city's northwest side. Fire investigators trying to figure out what exactly sparked flames that quickly destroyed a large part of a family's home. Crews were called out to the 12,300 block of Capeswood near De Zavala and I-10 just before 3 o'clock this morning. Our Alicia Bedetta is live at the scene with the latest information from authorities. Alicia, any updates on the family's missing dogs? Yes, so we were first told that the family had mentioned to firefighters that they had three dogs. Well, we can tell you now that two are accounted for. Firefighters also found a cat. And earlier we had mentioned that the dog that was found downstairs in one of the back bedrooms, well, he was in pretty bad shape, struggling to breathe, actually had to be put on doggy oxygen. That dog is now at the ER vet, but we know that he will make it. So that's the good news this morning. But exactly what went wrong this morning? Well, firefighters say that by the time they arrived just before three this morning, those flames were already through the roof, destroyed a big chunk of the second floor. The flames spread and actually ripped through the roof. Crews tell us they were able to take control and actually extinguish the flames in less than 30 minutes. And as far as damages go, we know the entire second floor is ruined. But as of this hour, no dollar estimate. The scene has been cleared, but investigators were here earlier uh, to determine exactly what the cause is because that's still unknown. Another thing that we do want to update you, it was first mentioned that this home was vacant. We spoke to firefighters again. They updated us and tell us that that's not the case. They, When they went in, they did see that a TV was on, so that gives them signs that someone was living there, but good news, no one was home. Reporting live from the city's northwest side, Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Alicia. Now, late breaking news from the state capitol in Austin, an 11th hour walkout by Democrats protesting a controversial new voting bill. But it may not be over just yet as Governor Greg Abbott is vowing to revive the controversial bill. ABC's Andrew Dimbert has a story. Breaking overnight, one of the most restrictive voting bills in the country failing to pass after Democrats in the Texas House walked out of the chamber in protest before the midnight deadline. They were prepared to cut us off and try to silence us. We were not going to let them do that. And that's why Democrats used the last tool available to us. We denied them the quorum that they need to pass this bill, and we killed that bill. Yeah. Earlier, the chair of the House Democratic Caucus used a text message to spread word of the plan, saying, members, take your keys and leave the chamber discreetly. Do not go to the gallery. Leave the building. The voting bill has stirred controversy across the country because it would make it easier to contest an election on allegations of fraud, would limit early voting on Sundays when many black voters normally go from church to the polls, and would ban 24-hour locations and drive through voting, which had increased turnout among minorities. The power to literally overturn elections, much as the insurrectionists tried to do on January 6th when they stormed the Capitol, that's what worries me the most. This is a state of emergency for democracy in Texas. It is clearly aimed at people of color, at black and Hispanic Texans. But supporters argue the bill will improve election security. I think what, what the Republicans here would tell you is that they're trying to make sure that the person voting uh, is the person on paper so it's a legitimate vote devoid of fraud. With the passage of this bill, Texas would join at least 14 Republican-led state houses that have approved more restrictive voting laws this year. And even though Democrats in Texas prevented a vote overnight, the Republican governor isn't giving up, responding this morning by saying he'll add the bill to a special legislative session, saying ensuring the integrity of our elections and reforming a broken bail system remain emergencies in Texas. They will be added to the special session agenda. Andrew Dimber, ABC News, New York. And more Texas politics. A far-reaching bill sent last night to Governor Greg Abbott would require some power generators to winterize against extreme cold. Now, this is all in response to February's historic winter blackout. That blackout leaving more than 4 million people without power. Experts praise some reforms as significant, but say concessions to Texas's powerful oil and gas industry still leaves our grid vulnerable. Remember, at least 151 people died in those February storms.
Well, many Texans are taking advantage of the long Memorial Day weekend with river access being restricted last year due to the coronavirus pandemic. The opportunity is long overdue, but the fun was almost cut short once again, thanks to heavy rains creating some dangerous conditions. The rain caused an increased flow of water as well as poor water clarity and debris along the river. But a little rain certainly wasn't going to keep visitors from the time honored Texas tradition of floating the river. It was a lot of fun, you know, seeing it all come down and just being at peace. A lot of a lot of boys were shivering out there, but we all made it through and it was good. We're Texans. This is the Guadalupe Kamal River. This is what we do. You know what I'm saying? This is what we come here for. The Kamal River operations manager says the river will stay open, weather permitting. The disposable food and beverage container ban is in effect, and she reminds the public to make safe and responsible choices while visiting. All right, time now, 6.09, 72 degrees out. Head on GMSA, our great graduate series continues with a young woman who overcame the language barrier to get closer to her goals. That's right, an amazing story. All right, taking a live look out at the Alamo City, 72 degrees to start your morning. What is the rest of the day? What does the work week look like? We're gonna check with Mike Osterhage in just a bit. Welcome back in our great graduate series. We highlight local students who have gone above and beyond, who have overcome the seemingly unimaginable circumstances and are now set up to thrive. And today we introduce you to Teresa Gomez of Brackenridge High School and SAISD, who didn't let a tough journey and a language barrier slow her down. It was hard. It was really hard not knowing the language, not being able to understand what they were saying or what they were telling me. And I just remember crying every night. To my mom. Meet Teresa Gomez, a graduating senior from Brackenridge High School, whose journey to this moment was far from easy. Her grandfather uh, really is kind of her hero because of how he crossed her over. Um, she had a story of one day being in Mexico, um, the next she found out she was going somewhere, and a few days later, I think she woke up here. So. It was a journey. Her grandfather carried her for three days. Teresa tells me she will never forget her family, and now they are a big part of what motivates her. Unfortunately, I lost my grandma two years ago, and my grandpa, my biggest, the person that brought me here, like six years ago. Oh. <laughs> it was hard, but and then not being able to go over there and not being there for the last time. It's really hard. But now I'm doing this for them. Well, I think she's a role model for her class and not just her class, but those coming behind her to know that, hey, I can do this. Teresa is an inspiration to her classmates, her teachers and her sisters. I say never give up, never give up and prove everybody wrong. Prove everyone wrong. If they're going to tell you, you're not going to be able to do it. Show them you can do it. Show them you're going to be able to be better than them. Next stop is Texas A&M San Antonio, where she wants to study to become a nurse. Really an amazing story and so excited for her next step. And like she was saying, she wants to be a nurse and she just wants to help a lot of people. You go, girl. All right. Well, taking a look at the roadways, Stephen Cavazos, how are we looking out there? Well, things are picking up, Max and Sarah, as the morning is getting started. Take a look here. This is from 35 at Nagalitos. Of course, as the <laughs> sun's coming up, we're going to start to see more drivers out on the roadways. Right now, things aren't too bad, but we have spotted some problems right here in those eastbound lanes of 1604. At the exit ramp to Nagadoshes, we have a crash that's been there for quite a while, not impacting anybody's traffic or commute, that is. So, But give those first responders plenty of room to get that scene clear. We'll be keeping tabs on that throughout the morning. If you are going to be fueling up before you hit the road, take a look here at these gas prices. Is 260 around the county, and if you around the state, we're looking at 271, and the around the country, 304. Now, TxDOT, of course, has launched their annual initiative, Click It or Ticket. Now, this campaign is done every year. It encourages drivers and passengers to buckle up before they hit the roads. We know a lot of people are going to be out on the roadways traveling throughout the summer. Last year, TxDOT did see a 16% increase in the number of deaths that were reported uh, from the number of people who were not wearing seatbelts. Here, what spokesman Laura Lopez had to say about that. 
that's just so disappointing to us because it's, it's extremely important and it's such a simple task. Does run through June 6, but of course, buckling up should be done year round. So guys, if you're going to be traveling on the roadways for Memorial Day, or if you're just heading home, be sure to buckle up and be safe on the roadways. Thank you, Stephen. And speaking of roadways, it doesn't look like there's any wet spots out there right now. A couple of them out in the hill country and then uh, further up to the north. There'll be, you know, one or two showers around today. I know a lot of folks, uh, some folks are saying, OK, enough with the rain. Uh, you may have had a heavy downpour yesterday. Some folks didn't see any rain yesterday, and that's going to be the situation again today. Temperatures are averaging right around low 70s. We're about uh, three, four degrees above the average, the normal low temperatures, and uh, we'll have a couple of showers as we have around the morning on radar right now and then scattered showers a couple of thunderstorms later on this afternoon again like yesterday not everybody will see rain but if you do see rain could have a decent little downpour and then it'll move on fairly quickly and then the rest of the week we are going to have more rain and that's going to continue on even on into the weekend we'll have a couple of days where we have some uh, some peaks out there this picture pretty much says it all Thank you, Yvonne, for this one. Today, we remember. Yes, indeed, we do appreciate that. Here is a look outside right now with live cam. And, well, we were able to see the top of the Tower of the... We can barely kind of make it out right about there, top of the Tower of the Americas. Here's those few little showers that we have as of right now. Like I said, in portions of the hill country and uh, maybe a, a couple of moderate showers here and there. Everything's moving along at a fairly decent clip, not just sitting in one spot. And then down along the coastal plain right there around Victoria. This one almost looks like since it's starting to grow a little bit, don't be surprised if there is a, a lightning strike with that. Tonight we do have the threat for some severe weather and we're going to have scattered showers, thunderstorms today, but then tonight it's looking like there's going to be one of those clusters of storms, kind of like what we had Friday. Uh, Friday into early Saturday developing out here, especially in the hill country. And so that's where the, uh, the threat for the severe weather is. And Storm Prediction Center is going to be updating that graphic later on this morning. So we'll see if that gets rearranged, changed at all. So here's what's going on. We've got this low, which is parked off to the west of us. And pretty much what that's doing is throwing all this energy in our direction, these little disturbances. And this thing is going to kind of sit out there for the next couple of days. So keep us in some of these rain chances. And actually by Wednesday, it looks like we we somewhat get a better chance for some rain. Then things will settle just a little bit. Still have some showers and thunderstorms around here Thursday and Friday. But going into the weekend, then another low is going to try and develop almost right on top of us, basically right on top of us. And that's going to be the focal point for more showers and thunderstorms, especially on Saturday and then into Sunday. And it looks like that will finally move on out of here then by the first part of next week. But overall, it's going to be kind of a wet first week of June. 80 today at noon, one or two showers out there, uh, maybe even a thunderstorm scattered about. And we'll have a few of them here and there later on this afternoon. 85 high temperature, that's five below normal. And all those top numbers, those high temperatures, not one of those is at the respective normal average temperature uh, to, tonight as well as tomorrow night. We have to watch out for those nighttime storm complexes to develop. Showers tomorrow, showers and thunderstorms. Best chance right now is going to be on Wednesday. A little bit uh, Thursday, Friday, and then rain chances go up again the weekend. All right, Mike. Well, thank you so much, and I'm glad you showed that picture Yvonne sent in. Yes. There are so many different exhibits, so many different memorials around town today, one of which at the San Antonio International Airport. Let's see if we can take that picture right there. It is really amazing. So each part of the table setting represents something different from the rose to the actual white table. Cloth. That's right. It's actually a really powerful symbol. That small table set for one symbolizes the isolation of the absent service member. Uh, that single rose you're seeing in the vase symbolizes the blood that service members have shed and sacrificed to ensure the freedom here in the U.S. Uh, they put salt on a bread plate symbolizing the tears shed by waiting families and a Bible represents the spiritual strength and to faith to sustain a loss like that. So powerful memorials across the city this morning as we remember those who have sacrificed for their country. Absolutely. Time now is 621, 72 degrees out. Well, still ahead on GMSA, Amazon is getting ready to share your internet with your neighbors. What you need to know after the break.
asthma. There's primatine mist. When symptoms strike, your airways narrow and there's less breathing room. Primatine mist is clinically shown to open airways quickly. Get the number one FDA approved over the counter asthma inhaler and breathe easy again. Look closely at a wolf. You've seen him before. He's your dog. Wolves and dogs share many traits, like a desire for meat. That's why there's Blue Wilderness, made with the protein rich meat your dog loves. Feed your dog's inner wolf with Blue Wilderness. In this morning's GMA First Look, one of the top female athletes in the world taking a stand. Naomi Osaka clinched a victory in the first round of the French Open Sunday, but gave a brief on-court interview. I'm really glad that I won, and um, it's a very beautiful court. And then, nothing else. No press conferences, no media availability, and she told her 2 million Instagram followers before the tournament, quote, I've often felt that people have no regard for athletes' mental health, and this rings very true whenever I see a press conference or partake in one. I'm just not going to subject myself to people that doubt me. Tournament officials hit back with a $15,000 fine. Osaka holding court on Twitter. Anger is a lack of understanding. Change makes people uncomfortable. Coming up at 7 a.m., veteran tennis commentator Patrick McEnroe weighs in live. With your GMA First Look, I'm Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York. And making tech news this morning, internet sharing via Amazon. Next week, the tech giant will enroll... Alexa and other devices in, get this, the Amazon Sidewalk Project. Now, the service will share part of your internet brand bandwidth with your neighbors who are not connected and vice versa. You do have the ability to opt out. We talked about this earlier. Would you opt in? Alexa, opt out. Oh. <laughs> Time now is 626, 73 degrees out. Well, head on GMSA, San Antonio was represented in yesterday's Indy 500 and there was a massive turnout. We have the highlights. And the latest on an overnight house fire on the northwest side. The owners desperately looking for their pets. We're going to bring you the latest. Taking a look outside, I-10 and 35. Not a lot of traffic this morning. Things looking pretty smooth out there. But we have Mike in and Stephen Cavazos to give you the latest when we come back. San Antonio man is recovering after being shot while riding a, a scooter. And President Joe Biden set for a wreath laying ceremony in honor of Memorial Day. Taking a look outside with live cam, a reminder on this Memorial Day, City Hall and most municipal offices are closed. Public safety and emergency services are still open and garbage and recycling will also be collected as normal today. Mike will let us know what to expect in the weather. That's right. Good morning. It is Monday, May 31st. It is Memorial Day. We know a lot of people out and about today. We know there are special ceremonies around the Alamo City and a big question when it comes to the weather. Exactly. You know, Mike, are people going to have to put sunscreen hat on when heading out to some of those ceremonies? The experts, doctors, I say put sunscreen on because you can get the worst sunburns on the cloudiest of days. Because I agree with it's you. It's not beating down on you and you just don't realize it. But yeah, you know, sunscreen, but grab an umbrella, too, because today's going to be a lot like yesterday where we had, you know, it was fairly quiet for a while. And then those showers and thunderstorms popped up and there could be, you know, a couple of decent downpours scattered about here and there. And then we're really going to have to watch out later on tonight and then the next couple of evenings and <laughs> you're going to get some use out of your umbrella this week. All right, it is just a just a murky looking morning out there with all this humidity and temperature is about to three degrees above normal right now. 69 is the dew point. That means there's a lot of humidity in the air, but it is that number is actually a little bit lower. It's somewhat more tolerable this morning than what it was late last week. Wind out of the southeast at uh, right around 11 miles per hour. We've got uh, a few showers that have been popping up in parts of the hill country. We saw these just starting to kind of creep up, um, what, a couple of hours ago. And a few, you know, okay showers mixed in. Everything's moving along fairly quickly, so not sitting in just one spot. Same thing up around uh, Canyon Lake. A couple of more of these are popping up here in Kamau County and sliding up to the north. And there are one or two of them down here right around Victoria. No indications of any lightning strikes as of right now. Tonight, there is the threat for some severe weather. There's one of those nighttime storm complexes, kind of like what we had Friday night, early Saturday morning, that's going to try and fire up out there to the west. And so that may produce some potentially severe weather with high winds and hail. Mostly cloudy, a shower, a storm around the area today. 
you know, most of us won't see rain today. Now tonight, different situation. Some of those overnight storms into early tomorrow morning and then just some scattered showers and storms throughout the day tomorrow. It looks like we'll do that all over again tomorrow night into Wednesday. Better chance for rain during the day on Wednesday. Still some showers Thursday, Friday and even into the weekend. So it is looking definitely like a wet week here and the wet May is just translating into a very wet first week of June. Details in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos, and uh, it's a holiday, so you'd expect not much going on. What's the situation? Yeah, you know, not much going on, Mike, but we have spotted this problem that still looks like it could be an issue if you're going to be heading out the doors here in the next few minutes. Uh, here off those eastbound lanes of 1604 exit ramp to Nacogdoches Road. Now, this has been here for quite a while, uh, but it doesn't look like it's impacting anything right now. But as you said, as people are going to be heading out on the roadways, they're going to want to be extra cautious. Uh, especially for crashes. We want people to be safe. Uh, now let's take a look at these inbound times here. 281 coming in from Bulverde to downtown San Antonio. We're looking at a 27 minute commute time. If you're coming in from Bernie on I-10, we got 24 minutes and Castroville on Highway 90. We're looking at a 19 minute commute time this morning. Now things are relatively quiet compared to normal days. The traffic picking up, but still a little smooth right now. Nothing too major to report, but we'll be keeping tabs on that crash in those eastbound lanes of 1604 throughout the morning and see how that may impact your commute in the next few minutes. Thank you, Stephen. A family left with only a few personal items after a fire destroying their home early this morning. Firefighters were dispatched around 3 o'clock this morning to the 12,300 block of Capeswood on the city's northwest side. Our Alicia Beretta has been live at the scene all morning long. She now joins us with details from authorities. Good morning, Alicia. Good morning. Well, the scene has been cleared, but we know that investigators were here earlier gathering information, gathering evidence to determine a cause. And now that the sun has come up or starting to come up, I want to show you more of those damages uh, before we take a look at what it looked like earlier today. So you can see that second floor, that roof totally ruined. There's no way that anyone can go up there or live up there, right? So we have the family, uh, we see them gathering some of those items, uh, but we know that the fire started on the second floor. This was just before 3 a.m. this morning. Firefighters say the flames quickly spread and destroyed all the bedrooms. There were three bedrooms up there, one bathroom, and of course, the flames ripped through the roof. Crews tell us they were able to take control, extinguish those flames in about 30 minutes. Uh, but the biggest concern for the family this morning, they weren't home, but their pets were. We know two dogs were were recovered. They are accounted for. One of them is at the ER vet, uh, needed oxygen, wasn't doing too well, but we know that dog will make it alive. They will recover. And then another animal that was recovered is a cat. So this morning, the family thankful for that. But again, they're having to gather what they can, mostly items in the garage area. Uh, as of this area, as of this hour, no estimate on the damages just yet. That's still part of the ongoing investigation. Reporting live from the city's northwest side, Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Alicia. Texas Democrats staging a late night, early morning walkout at the state house, keeping a sweeping state voting bill from passing into law. Republicans who introduced the bill were racing against a midnight deadline to win approval. Democrats walked off the floor at the last minute, leaving them without a minimum number of members to vote. Lack of quorum that forced them to adjourn. The measure would adopt several policies if it was passed into law. It would ban unsolicited mail in ballot in ballot requirements and would actually require ID and signature matching for mail-in ballots. It would also expand access for partisan poll watchers. Republicans say it gives security to state elections while Democrats are calling it discrimination. Now, Governor Greg Abbott has indicated he will add the bill to a special session he plans to call later this year. A man is recovering in the hospital after San Antonio police say he was shot while riding his scooter. Officers tell us the man in his late teens was with his uncle riding scooters on East Martin near Soledad around 2 o'clock this morning. The victim told police he heard a few pops and realized his leg had been hit by a bullet after a vehicle drove past them. He was taken to Bamsey in stable condition. No description of suspects or the vehicle was given. And police asking for your help trying to solve a northwest side robbery. Authorities say this all happened May 20th, just after 6 p.m. This happened in the 6500 block of Springtime Drive. Police tell us a group of men approached another group, then robbed them at GovPoint. 
Now take a look at your screen. That is a picture of one of the suspects seen carrying a black bag. If you recognize this man or have any information on the robbery, if you can help police in this case, you are asked to call Crime Stoppers. That number also on your screen, 210-224-STOP. Well, this morning, the man accused of plotting to carry out a mass shooting at a Walmart in Kerrville remains in Kerr County Jail at a $250,000 bond. The Kerr County Sheriff's Office say 28-year-old Coleman Thomas Blevins is charged with terroristic threat to create public fear and serious bodily injury. Investigators say they intercepted a message from Blevins on Thursday indicating he was, quote, preparing to proceed with a mass shooting and that the threat included Walmart. Blevins was arrested Friday. Authorities searched his home and found firearms, ammunition, and more, including what officials called radical ideology paraphernalia, such as books, flags, and handwritten documents. On the wake of the death of George Floyd, we've seen protests and calls for police reforms around the country and here at home, all during a pandemic. San Antonio City Manager Eric Walsh joined us yesterday for our leading essay segment to explain what last year has looked like. And let's take a listen. In last summer, there were a number of policies that the police chief enacted, things that uh, like no knock warrants. Um, we changed how we respond to uh, some of our mental health calls, which which we all know can turn violent or deadly. Um, but I think broadly, we're, we started identifying um, kind of a rebalance of our of our own disciplinary system that was really needed uh, to, to make changes from a long term perspective here. Well, that was just a small portion of our full conversation. You can watch it right now. Just head to the leading essay section of KSAT.com. And if you ever have someone that you would like to hear from in our community, feel free to reach out to Sarah or myself. Well, today is Memorial Day, a day to honor and remember those who died for our country. President Biden heading to Arlington National Ceremony for a special wreath lying ceremony. For many Americans, this Memorial Day marks the beginning of a return to normalcy, a big shift from what we saw last year at this time, where we were really at the height of this pandemic lockdowns. Now, coronavirus cases are down and more than half the country now vaccinated. As a result, more and more states are dropping their COVID restrictions and Americans are ready to get out more now than ever. Time now, just about 640, 73 degrees out. Well, just ahead from rough and tumble play to ignoring a teacher's instructions, what can adults do to reduce children and prevent them from this challenging behavior? Welcome back. Well, most people know that being a parent is not the easiest job, especially when you have kids who don't always behave. That's right. And in the classroom, chronic behaviors like crying, hitting, or even biting can create cycles where teachers may react negatively to disruptive behavior. RJ Marquez has tips on how to promote positive behaviors that will keep kids learning. From horsing around to rough and tumble play, kids will be kids, but some behaviors may be more extreme than others. For example, here's what some parents have faced. I know I was a big hitter. I once cut a slit in my brother's hair and he had to shave it. Maureen Conroy studies social emotional learning in young children and says challenging behaviors that happen often and are intense, such as hitting or kicking others, can interfere with a child's learning. If those challenging behaviors are not addressed early, they can lead to negative outcomes years later. They can even be more likely to end up um, dropping out of school. Conroy co-developed the best in class intervention. It teaches children behavioral expectations and rules and routines that apply to any setting, a friend's house, the grocery store or library. We use our inside voices. We use our walking feet. We listen with our ears. Provide corrective feedback when a challenging behavior occurs by showing kids an alternative behavior. Social scientists say parents play a big role. This program established a homeschool partnership that focuses on sharing information about the child's behavior. The study found that coaching teachers and parents could help address challenging behaviors. RJ Marcus, KSAT 12 News. All right, San Antonio having a stake in yesterday's Indy 500 in front of 135,000 fans. 22-year-old Pato O'Work 
Wow, qualified in 12th. He started the greatest spectacle in racing in the fourth row in front of fans, 40% capacity. Still the largest post pandemic crowd to watch in person. Trust me, it was not disappointing. In the end though, boiling down to a four car showdown. San Antonio's Pato Award. We got Simon, Alex, and Castro Neves. Paulo and Catra Neves traded the lead multiple times over the final 20 laps with two laps to go. Catra Neves takes the lead for good. He navigates lapped traffic for the rest of the way to win the Indy 500, a record tying fourth time in his career. The first four time winner in 30 years since 1991. His post race celebration legendary. Mike Oster is enjoying it on the heels of his first ever IndyCar victory at Texas Motor Speedway earlier this month. 22 year old award was in the mix the entire race, even led the greatest spectacle in racing more than once. Born in Mexico, moved to San Antonio with his parents. He would finish fourth overall in what would go down as the fastest Indy 500 ever. All right, from the speedway to the court. Clippers at Mavericks. I know the Spurs aren't in it, so I'll give a good old go Spurs go. But we still have the NBA playoffs. LA up one. Paul George. Oh, he's pretty good. He pulled up for a long jumper. Up 18 at halftime. And it really would just kind of go for the Clippers the rest of the way. They pretty much dominated the last couple games. Kawhi Leonard. He stepped up a couple slams here and there. He would go baseline. Luka and the Mavs. They won first two games. But here we go. Clips. Now they pretty much stifled the Mavs. They would go up to win 106 to 81, tying the series 2 2. And fun fact, neither team has won a home game. There you go. It's funny, back to the Indy 500, mm -hmm. Mike was watching and he was like a little boy, like making yeah. the race count. I was like, vroom, vroom, vroom. Look at him go. All right. <laughs> we love the high speeds in the Indy 500, but not on our roadways. Absolutely not. Steven, no high speeds, no Indy 500 going no, on here. Not at all. We do not want to see our drivers driving like that on our roadways. You know, take it slow if you're heading out the door this morning. Things are looking pretty slow right now. Take a look here at Trans Guide. This is 410 at 151. Not too many people out on the roadways. We know that it is Memorial Day. Some people may have the day off. So, but we do see a little bit of traffic that's slowly building up, but not what we're used to seeing during a typical work day. We still have this crash that's here on 1604 eastbound exit ramp to Nacogdoches Road. Not impacting much traffic right now, but let's take a look and see how those lanes are shaping up right now at this hour. We have 14 minutes in those eastbound lanes to I-10 to 35 and over in those westbound lanes. We're looking at a 14 minute commute time, so not impacting traffic right now, but this is something we've been keeping tabs with throughout the morning and seeing how that may impact drivers commute. Now, while things are looking pretty smooth here on our roadways, TxDOT has launched their click it or ticket campaign. Now that's an annual initiative. It just encourages people, drivers, passengers, buckle up and stay safe because we know a lot of people are still traveling. Mike. Thank you. And of course, on Memorial Day, we commemorate those who have uh, lost their lives in service of our country. And if I may, this was my dad's oldest brother, my uncle Robert. Of course, never knew him. He uh, was in the Army Air Corps in World War II and was killed near the end of uh, end of World War II. And tie into San Antonio, as a lot of folks do, had his training at Randolph. Here's a picture outside right now, and uh, boy, it's just a murky start this morning. We, for the month of uh, March and April, of course, we did finally get some rain toward the end of April. We had a couple of days with some rain during uh, March, and that totaled just about six and two thirds inches. Then the month of May, and that's pretty much equaled what we had in March and April. So more than a foot, basically about 13 inches of rain between these three months in the, the spring months, the meteorological spring months since the, the first of March. And uh, 24 hours in the past 24 hours had a lot more added to that. Now there wasn't a lot at the airport, but there was some and there were some spots, you know, it was very spotty yesterday where it was an inch to two and a half inches of rain. And even in the metropolitan area, you know, down here, right uh, southwest of town, Estimates inch, inch and a half of rain, two inches up there around Helotus, and then you go, what, a couple of miles, one direction? Didn't even see anything. Heard a lot of uh, thunder and lightning yesterday afternoon. This is going to be the situation again today. We've got a couple of showers scattered about the area right now, some over there in portions of the hill country, and then down here along the coastal plain. We'll have a couple of showers, thunderstorms again here and there. Now, what we're going to have to watch out for, though, is tonight when one of these nighttime storm complexes gets going 
similar situation to what we had Friday night late, and this will work its way on through the area. Should be pretty much in the overnight hours, and then we'll have scattered rain throughout the day tomorrow, and then it looks like tomorrow night, another one of those storm complexes is going to be developing, working its way through here into early Wednesday morning, and then throughout the day Wednesday, we do have an, uh, another chance for uh, some more scattered showers throughout the day. Also, there's the risk of severe weather tonight, primarily in the hill country as well as tomorrow evening and 80 degrees today at noon, a couple of showers, 85 showers, one or two thunderstorms out there later on today and uh, could have a couple of decent downpours. Most of us won't see rain today. Better chances of rain. Well, of course, tonight and then tomorrow and then we are going to have uh, more rain on Wednesday, Tuesday overnight into Wednesday and then still Thursday, Friday and it looks like it's picking back up again then Saturday and Sunday. I'll ah. take it if it means lower temperatures. Yeah, I mean, yeah. now humidity, of course, something to right. deal with. But yeah, all those high temperatures, those are below normal. It's funny, I'm over here like, we don't need more rain. You're smiling ear to ear. I love rain. There you go. All Just right. dump all the water. You know, watch out for standing water because that helps oh, mosquitoes. Yeah, so, mosquitoes are awful yeah. right now. Mm -hmm. All right, Mike, thank you. 651, 73 degrees out. Well, is failing at something the best way to learn? Oh. A lot of people think so, but we'll tell you what researchers say. That's tomorrow on GMSA. What's the line? You might lose, but don't lose the lesson. Sure, Max. All right, there you go. There's your quote for the morning. Taking a look out there, we just checked in with Mike. Make sure to be wary of those, uh, those possible showers throughout the next, what, seven days? Yeah. All right, we'll be right back. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA this Memorial Day, signs that the nation is racing back to life. From that huge crowd at the Indy 500 to beaches and restaurants across this country, full. Well, not on the East Coast because the weather was pretty horrid, but Americans have traveled in record numbers and now COVID cases are plummeting. We're going to have the latest on all those angles and so much more coming up right here on GMA. Good morning, everyone. We are taking a close look at the roads on this Memorial Day. Nothing too major to report right now. Things are pretty quiet, but we do have this crash that's been happening for the last uh, throughout the show, actually not impacting traffic right now. And this is in the eastbound lanes of 1604 right at Nacogdoches. We'll be keeping on tabs, tabs on that throughout the morning, uh, but taking a look at our inbound times right now coming in from New Braunfels on 35. We're looking at 25 minutes. 281, 27 minutes to downtown San Antonio and about 24 minutes coming in from I-10 to Bernie. Now taking a look here at Transguide, very quiet on this Memorial Day, but Mike, I think there's a few things that they're going to want to be uh, close on, keeping a close eye on regards to the, to the weather. Yeah, because we'll have a couple more showers and uh, maybe a thunderstorm popping up. Boy, it's a murky morning out there and there's just a few little showers scattered about the area right now. We'll see a few more here and there later on today. 80 at noon, 85 for a high temperature, one or two thunderstorms thrown in. Most of us won't see rain today, but if you do, could have a decent downpour. We will have some showers and thunderstorms look like a couple of complexes tonight and that may produce some severe weather off to the west and then we are going to keep the chance of rain around all week long and into the weekend. Thank you, Mike, and remember to take time to honor those and remember those who sacrificed for our country on this Memorial Day and we'll see you back here GMSA at 9. See you at 9.